couple other states that they do care about, like France and, and Germany. So I think that I think that having said that, it is an understandable fear that a regional leader would have and and would want to enforce red lines on but that's not the real but, but that's the the way to do that is not by fucking invading ukraine number 1 and number 2 he basically admits that he doesn't give a shit about the nato part of it but more so about the fact that it's supposed to be russian there was a time and place when vladimir putin was not as readily uh was not as ready to admit this reality why do you believe him? Why do I believe Vladimir Putin saying that he thinks uh, Ukraine is Russian? I don't believe Ukraine is Russian. I believe Ukraine is Ukraine. I'm saying I believe Vladimir Putin. This is like believing GWB about the WMDs. No, it's not. This is like if George W. Bush said, I'm invading Iraq because of oil. No, believe Putin believes Ukraine is Russian. No, I don't think... No, I'm saying Putin is using that as a justification. It's like if George W. Bush went uh, and, and instead of saying, like, they have weapons of mass destruction, said, I'm going to Iraq because Iraq has oil. If, if George W. Bush says that openly, then yeah, I'm going to believe him because that's my assessment too. I think Putin is saying the hyper-nationalistic argument because there is a, a, a real interest, at least for him, either for his own personal belief that, like, Ukraine belongs to Russia, or because he wants to um, not get outflanked by the ultranationalists that he's fearful of on, uh, uh, to his, uh, his right-wing flank that do want to engage in his actions in Ukraine. That's it. Ultimately, he invalidated every other claim, which weren't even worthy arguments to invade Ukraine in the first place. By using false irrelevant historical claims to suggest Ukraine doesn't actually exist to justify imperialism, in order to do so, as he would claim, bring back their rightful land through force. Yeah. Now that also, in my opinion, fucks up the negotiations, because if you're saying you're bloodthirsty and want it. Uh, and and that Ukraine is Russian, then you're kind of you're kind of ruining the argument. I don't know. You're kind of ruining the argument that you will inevitably withdraw, and that you want to like institute by force the Minsk Protocols, right, or the 15 point plan. And I think that that is. I don't know. I, I think that that's ultimately, well, obviously I don't agree with it. Uh, I don't think it's a good thing at all, but I, I don't know. I think it makes it, you're actually dumb if you think this isn't a good interview. The interview is going to change the world. No, I do think it's a good interview for Vladimir Putin. I think it makes him look reasonable. They rarely, if at all, talked about his actions in Ukraine. And if you don't do that, and that's the major fucking point here, that's the major point of contention here, and you don't ever talk about that at all, then yeah, he looks very reasonable. He's on constantly on the offensive against America. It it almost feels like he he was just like moved to do a special military operation in Ukraine. He just had no other reason. He wanted to align with America over and over again, and America kept swatting him away. You know? In America, where the belligerent warmongers and Vladimir Putin was just simply pushed into a corner, he had nothing else that he could do, while simultaneously also offering historical claims to Ukraine. It's crazy. It is, um, I think that overall, it's a massive W for him. So you're saying that Putin is doing Israel? Yes. I think Putin is doing Israel and Putin is begging in the beginning for America to treat him like Israel or at least claiming that historically 
He always wished America would treat him like Israel. But yeah, ultimately he comes across reasonable. Uh, once you move beyond the old man uh, uh, talking about like weird historical uh, claims to why Ukraine is Russian, which are bullshit, of course. And, it, and you wouldn't even think that he is currently invading its neighboring country. If you come into this uninitiated, not really paying attention to what the fuck's going on, you're looking at this as like, well, here's a regional leader that comes across very sane. Much more sane than Joe Biden, I would say. You know what I mean? Like, you do not leave this interview thinking like, yeah, this is a fucking massive failure of an invasion of a neighboring nation that has been incredibly costly as far as human lives and as far as like destruction of infrastructure. And now it's like, uh, now it's in a death grip for inches of territory with back and forth. You would not think that at all. Things look fucking cheery. You know? Being the uproar and screaming about inflicting a strategic defeat on Russia on the battlefield. Now they are apparently coming to realize that it is difficult to achieve, if possible at all. In my opinion, it is impossible by definition. It is never going to happen. It seems to me that now, those who are in power in the West have come to realize this as well. If so, if the realization has set in, they have to think what to do next. We are ready for this dialogue. Would you be willing to say, congratulations, NATO, you won, and just keep the situation where it is now? You know, it is a subject matter for the negotiations. No one is willing to conduct or, to put it more accurately, they are willing but do not know how to do it. I know they want to. It is not just I see it, but I know they do want it. But they are struggling to understand how to do it. They have driven the situation to the point where we are at. It is not us who have done that, it is our partners, opponents who have done that. Well, now let them think how to reverse the situation. We're not against it. It would be funny if it were not so sad. This endless mobilization in Ukraine, the hysteria, the domestic problems, sooner or later it will result in agreement. You know, this probably sounds strange given the current situation. But the relations between the two peoples will be rebuilt anyway. It will take a lot of time, but they will heal. I'll give you very unusual examples. There is a combat encounter on the battlefield. Here's a specific example. Ukrainian soldiers got encircled. This is an example from real life. Our soldiers were shouting to them, there is no chance, surrender yourselves, come out and you will be alive. Suddenly, the Ukrainian soldiers were screaming from there in Russian, perfect Russian, saying, Russians do not surrender, and all of them perished. They still identify themselves as Russian. What is happening is, to a certain extent, an element of a civil war. Everyone in the West thinks that the Russian people have been split by hostilities forever. No, they will be reunited. The unity is still there. Why are the Ukrainian authorities dismantling the Ukrainian Orthodox Church? Bro, I don't think, like, I don't know. I think that's bullshit. Like, I, I get in the most charitable, I can't believe I'm saying this, in the most charitable way, if I'm going to be as charitable as possible to Vladimir fucking Putin of all people, I think the argument here is that, like, Ukrainians also see themselves as one people. Ukrainians and Russians are one people. Everybody sees themselves as one people, one nation, under God, indivisible fucking Orthodox Christianity. I don't think that's the case. It's not. Uh, and it especially is not, because if that was the case, I feel like the rest of Ukraine would look like Crimea. Like, he literally said it's a civil war. Like, that's not a civil war. That's a whole ass different country.
sure, same language, same lettering. Don't get mad at me, Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainians and Ukrainian flag in the bio guys. I'm saying as a dumbass American, it's like virtually impossible for me to decipher. Okay. I know, I know. Everybody says not the same. I know. Okay. Oh. But this is why there is a major distinction from where I'm standing within Hamburg Cyrillic. Yeah. Um, that's why I always distinguish between Crimea and like the rest of Ukraine. Um, both in terms of the annexation, how the annexation happened, what the retaliation was from Ukraine. Um, you know, that there's, there's a difference. In case you're like, oh no, these guys are all like, these guys, this is one nation. This is a uh, fucking, this is one nation and, and this is a civil war while you are currently invading the borders of a different sovereign nation. And the irony is that while you said the Ukrainians that live next to the Russian border can consider themselves Russians and he uses them as an example for the entire country. Yeah, except since the invasion, it's over. Because there are still plenty of people who did not consider themselves that. And beyond that, why would anybody fucking be like, oh, thank God Russia came in and blew our shit up? Because it brings together not only the territory, it brings together our souls. No one will be able to separate the soul. Shall we end here or is there anything else? No, I think that's great. I see. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, no shot, dude. Um, that was a long ass.